<laughs> because while it is true that 99.9% .9 of theorists think inflation is a beautiful idea, some people don't like it, and you're one of them, and maybe you want to talk about why. Yeah. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is, uh, is this. So uh, this is where theory has been going uh, at the same time as all these marvelous observations have been probing the universe and telling us about uh, the energy in the vacuum, telling us about the fluctuations which came out of the early universe, magnificent data. Uh, meanwhile, this inflation theory has been uh, being developed and connected to string theory and various other elaborations of the particle physics we know. And this was the result, a multiverse, uh, telling us that we live in a patch of universe, which may be different than other patches of the universe. And this multiverse has gradually become the most unpredictive, uh, unscientific theory uh, of all time. And that worries me a great deal because, um, because I am a theorist and because theoretical physics has this incredible tradition dating back to Newton and Maxwell, who understood the laws of electromagnetism, and Einstein, the laws of gravity, this type of knowledge is absolutely fundamental to the progress of science. We wouldn't have discovered the dark energy without having Einstein's theory as a guide to what to look for, to what the signal uh, of the dark energy would be. So this catastrophe of modern theory uh, <laughs> simultaneously has come along with stunning simplicity in the measurements of the universe. So in the case of the dark energy, it is converging on this very, very simplest possibility that the vacuum has an energy which is the same everywhere and immutable, doesn't change. Can't get any, anything simpler than that. Uh, the Planck satellite measurements are showing us those fluctuations on the sky coming out of the early universe. Those fluctuations take the simplest possible form, which is that they are very nearly the same on all scales. We, we can probe uh, in the early universe, from the tiniest to the largest ones we can see, and they take the form of what we call Gaussian random noise. It's basically the simplest type of fluctuation which contains no further information in it. It's like a random pattern of waves on the sea. So it turns out we can parameterize that map which uh, Jan showed us with one, maybe two numbers, R roughly speaking one and a half numbers, you can explain <laughs> the entire structure of the visible universe. It's crazy. But, it, but Neil, it's isn't it simpler, interesting it's that inflation than... predicts Gaussian random fluctuation? No, it doesn't. Okay, good. <laughs> inflation isn't a scientific theory. Inflation, <laughs> inflation comes in a thousand different varieties. Most Each of which one of predict which, random Gaussian fluctuation. No, there's no most. Well, because most you know the, simpler, the simplest ones, yeah, the simplest ones are now close to being ruled out by, uh, precisely by the Planck satellite measurements and the failure to confirm gravitational waves. So whereas inflation is predicting this multiverse, uh, gravitational waves, it allows theories, uh, many different fields, it allows the composition of the universe to vary from place to place. Uh, that's not what the observations are pointing to. They're pointing to a tremendous simplicity. So I find this incredibly encouraging for fundamental theory because the universe is turning out to be simpler than we thought, simpler than we expected, and it's compelling us to try to come up with a new explanation. Mm -hmm.